Have you ever designed a glass fiber filled part only to find that the part that came out of the mold was the wrong shape? Glass fibers prevent shrinkage in the direction of flow, and when the part shrinks non-uniformly, it can warp in ways we don't expect. Moldex 3D can help us understand warpage trends in glass fiber filled parts so we can design parts that meet our expectations. The warpage results are going to include displacement and thermally induced stress. Before we look at those though, I want to point out a few important items in the filling and packing sections that will help us understand these results better. In the filling results, fiber orientation shows us the direction the fibers are oriented in, as well as how strongly they are oriented. A value of one third means completely random orientation, and a value of one means 100% of fibers are oriented in the same direction. We can see that the fibers close to the mold surface radiate out from the gate and the fibers at the core of the part are displayed in blue, indicating a more random orientation. Remember, these fibers resist shrinkage in the direction of their orientation, so that will affect the shape the part takes once the plastic shrinks. In the packing results, we see the volumetric shrinkage result. It shows how the plastic shrinks as a result of cooling down from its molten state to room temperature. The relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature, or the PVT relationship of the material, will vary across the part. Uniform volumetric shrinkage will cause the part to simply get smaller, and a large variation in volumetric shrinkage increases the part's potential for warp. Looking at the cross-section of this part, we see that the volumetric shrinkage is higher in thick regions than in thin regions. This makes sense because the thick regions will stay hotter for longer, allowing them to continue shrinking for a longer period of time. And then we get to the warpage results. Displacement allows you to see the part's final shape once it's ejected and cooled to room temperature. The fact that this can be done before you cut steel means that if the part doesn't meet your specifications, you can make design changes without the long lead time and high cost of retooling. This result does not show the direction of displacement, so to help you visualize how the part will change, you can use the deformation tool. By increasing the scale factor, you can see the direction that different areas of the part will move in. Here, we see that the part shrinks inwards and warps a bit like a potato chip. Then we see the thermally induced residual stress result. Non-uniform volumetric shrinkage is going to cause stress inside of the part. Whatever stress remains in the part after it warps is called thermally induced residual stress. That stress can be expressed as stress components, shear stress, and von Mises stress. The stress components show the residual stress in the x, y, or z direction. For shear stress, the first letter tells you the axis and the second letter tells you the plane it operates on. So xy tells you how much stress in the x direction is acting on the y plane of the part. It describes the tension of the plastic molecules pulling on each other from the way they flowed into the mold cavity and froze into place. And finally, von Mises stress can be used to determine whether the part will yield or fracture. The von Mises stress must be kept below the yield stress for the material. The higher the stress is for the part, the more prone it will be to failure or dimensional changes as the part is exposed to heat and moisture and as time passes. So with Moldex 3D, we can see how the part fills, packs, cools, and as a result, how the final part will look. Before cutting steel, we can compare different gate designs, cooling channel layouts, and part geometries that optimize our parts. This keeps our tooling costs low and reduces the amount of time it takes to bring a new product to the market. If you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us over on LinkedIn. I'll see you there.